Good morning, everyone. I don't know what it's supposed to be like to uh, fit in between an ambassador and Rex Murphy. So I, I, I feel it for you guys right now. Uh, thank you so much for the introduction and uh, for the chance to come and spend a few minutes with you this morning. I, uh, I have the opportunity to spend, uh, go from here up to, uh, up to Parliament and, and uh, meet with a number of ministers also, very importantly, about uh, the future of energy development uh, in our country. I'm so uh, very pleased to be able to be here at your annual legislative conference to discuss the key role New Brunswick can play in getting Canadian oil to market through our government's focus on energy, innovation, and natural resources. As you can well imagine, the Energy East pipeline is a cornerstone for our growth plan. As a government, we've done everything possible to support the, vi the vision for development of Canadian oil resources. We've met with industry partners and colleagues from across this country to clearly indicate that New Brunswick wants to be an active partner in Canada's future prosperity. Let me assure you, this vision is about building our nation, strengthening our national economy, increasing our exports and our energy security, and most importantly, creating good jobs for our citizens. Our government believes a national oil pipeline is strategic to Canada's national interests and will help New Brunswick realize our potential of becoming an energy powerhouse within North America. Allow me to be clear, and this is not political rhetoric, New Brunswick's potential to develop a robust energy economy is massive. Not all Canadians are aware that the Port of St. John has safely and efficiently handled the largest crude oil carriers in the world for decades. Through their Canaport terminal, Irving Oil has imported over two billion barrels of oil during the 40 years of operation. New Brunswick is home to the Irving Oil Refinery, Canada's largest and most modern refinery located in St. John. And this refinery currently operates with a capacity in excess of 300,000 barrels a day. Its output accounts for 42% of all Canada's refined petroleum products exports to the US. And to give you some context to that, three out of every five cars that are on roads in Boston drive by, uh, because of gasoline that comes from New Brunswick. In addition to its capacity, we potentially have the largest shale gas deposits in North America. Think about it. Which could see upwards of $20 billion in future investments. And more importantly, mean that our people, our skilled tradespeople, can work at home. When we speak about strengthening Canada through smart and responsible resource development, we must never lose track of what we're really speaking about, jobs in communities all over our country. And these jobs ultimately are for your members. And we're speaking about, about projects that will raise revenues allowing governments to reinvest in education, healthcare, and compassionate support for our most vulnerable citizens. Canadian men and women, they want to work. They want good jobs and industries that they choose. They want a strong economy where their families can take root and their communities can grow. Like many provinces, New Brunswick was built on natural resource development. And we believe firmly that our future growth and prosperity depends on our ability to responsibly develop our resources and access new markets. Last year, the Canadian Chamber of Commerce released a report that shows how the lack of energy infrastructure at a national level is hindering our success in energy markets at a rate of $50 million a day. 
We know that oil and gas will continue to energize our national economy for generations to come. And we know that with the decline in U.S. demand, our only current international market, we need to find smart ways to maximize the value of our oil resource and access new markets. I want to commend the many partners who are working hard to drive this vision forward and maximize the value of Canada's oil resources by accessing new markets and opportunities. Tidewater is the key to accessing these new and in some cases emerging markets from Europe and Asia. And New Brunswick offers the most direct, reliable and proven access to these worldwide markets through the Port of St. John, the deepest ice-free port on the east coast of North America. But make no mistake about it, and we can have full confidence that Canada boasts some of the strongest environmental protections in the world. La confiance que nous avons envers nos lois de protection de l'environnement est bien méritée. À titre de Canadien et de Canadien, nous valorisons l'environnement. Il constitue l'infrastructure naturelle de nos collectivités. On a national level, the Energy East pipeline will create 10,000 jobs and generate $10 billion in additional GDP during the development and construction phase. Approximately half of the jobs created in the development and construction phase will be in the construction, engineering, architectural, and oil and gas support service industries. It will generate an additional $25.3 billion in GDP during its estimated 40 years of operation and sustain 1,000 direct full-time jobs. Energy East will also generate $10 billion in tax revenues for all levels of government over the life of the project which is expected to extend beyond 40 years with regular maintenance. In addition to the thousands of jobs associated with construction, refining, and shipping, the Energy East pipeline has the capacity to create new jobs and opportunities through expanded supply chains. And in New Brunswick, we see potential for brand new industries such as petrochemicals, plastics, and yes, shale gas. These opportunities, in addition to the jobs and investments that will be generated, provide a very bright outlook for New Brunswick's communities. We are focused on turning these opportunities into realities. This is why our government is so committed to the responsible development of a domestic natural gas sector in New Brunswick. Notre gouvernement est fermement convaincu que la gérance de l'environnement et la croissance économique sont les deux piliers d'une société forte et d'un avenir prospère. Et nous sommes d'avis que l'expansion de l'industrie du gaz naturel au Nouveau-Brunswick créera des ouvertures au plan économique. New Brunswick manufacturers are looking forward to the opportunity to be more competitive and win jobs back from emerging economies. Clearly, there are huge opportunities for jurisdictions that can supply this insatiable appetite for natural gas around the world. And literally, we see the demand in every corner of the world. When a, a delegation from the government of New Brunswick went to India on an investment mission last fall, the Minister of Energy heard that India wants to be able to increase their LNG imports from their current 15 million tons to 75 million tons over the next six years. And New Brunswick needs to be able to take advantage of that. I recently presented as well to 25 European ambassadors, and they too see the opportunities that St. John pre presents in helping they, them diversify their supply needs. In Canada, while our national unemployment rate sits at 7%, oil and gas producing provinces like Alberta and Saskatchewan are at 4.3% and 3.9% respectively. 
And in the U.S., where oil and gas development has dramatically reshaped certain states' economic landscapes, the shift is even more noticeable. While the average U.S. unemployment rate currently is at 6.7 percent, North Dakota, and we know the development that's taking place there, enjoys an unemployment rate of just 2.6 percent. And what is really telling for me is in the early 1990s, New Brunswick, our uh, average salary per capita was actually higher than that of Saskatchewan. And today in Saskatchewan, their average salary is 25 percent higher in New Brunswick. That is what developing natural uh, resources means to people. These numbers speak to why our government is so adamant in the face of opposition to developing our natural gas. The cost of not moving forward is simply too great. I want to say that we rely heavily on our strong relationship with the building and construction trade unions as valued members for Canadian opportunities. Together, our vision for New Brunswick and the work that you do go hand in hand. We want the very best for New Brunswick and its energy economy, and that means keeping all of you working in your chosen field. The New Brunswick Building and Construction Trades Council actively participates in any consultation related to the industry. And I would like to take the moment to thank Gary Ritchie and Andrew Dawson for the work that they do and the outstanding relationship that we have together. Both of these men do a tremendous job at representing your interests and play an important role in New Brunswick infrastructure projects. They are instrumental partners in the development of our new labor force and skills development strategy. And our strategy will help ensure that we've got the right people with the right skills to bring the best New Brunswick products and solutions to the world. I want to just mention as well that this includes the important work that's going on in modernizing and harmonizing apprenticeship across provinces. And I believe that our ability uh, to get the right labor force at the right time, at the right place, is the most important issue that we are facing as a nation to prosperity. And from a national standpoint, the Canadian building and construction trades are very involved through various initiatives that help drive growth in our country. Each and every one of you in this room play an invaluable leadership role within your own provinces and to the country as a whole. You are business-friendly labor. Keep it up. We need to be able to create jobs in New Brunswick, especially in the energy sector. I began by saying that we must never forget why we're promoting the sp smart and responsible development of our natural resources. This is about jobs for Canadian men and women and the services, ultimately, that governments can provide to its citizens. The benefits of responsible resource development belong to all Canadians, as well as future generations. We are at a crossroads in New Brunswick, and I believe, indeed, across the country. Canada is at risk of standing still while our competitors around the world are moving forward and making plans to move past us. As Canadians, we need to think about what will, this will mean for our children and their children. Our prosperity that we have is not a right, nor is it guaranteed. I believe that as Canadians, we must work together to build a strong vision for the future if we hope to reclaim our position as the world's leading source of new ideas and products. As Canadians, I'm convinced we can rise above our challenges to ensure that our future carries as much hope and opportunities as our past by working together and by building on the solid foundations that we've created. I'm convinced that Canada will continue to move forward. Thank you so much 
for the work that you do. Thank you so much for standing up and being counted uh, and helping us deliver the message that Canadians need to get of why prosperity is important and why prosperity is at risk if we're not able to ensure that our people have good jobs so that they can provide good lives for their families and our communities. Thank you for making a difference. Thank you, merci.